वेलकम बैक एवरी वन टू मई चानल कैमिस्ट्री मेड सिंपल फॉर नीट ऐ आम डॉक्टर लक्ष्मी सुब्रमण्यम वित् पी एच डी इन कैमिस्ट्री टूडे वी आर गोयिंग टू कंटिन्यू वित् लास्ट पार्ट आफ सर्फस् कैमिस्ट्री यूनिट फाइव क्लास ट्वेलव सो फर्स्ट ऐ लाइक टू स्टार्ट वित् वन इंपार्टेंट टिप फॉर रिविशन लाइक वेन यू गेट बोर्ड वित् योर रोटीन प्रिपरेशन ऑफ लेसन यू कैन रिलय ऑन लेसन टू मेक योर प्रिपरेशन इंट्रेस्टिंग so in the lesson segment i am trying to uh, explain the concepts in the form of uh, uh, small segments which helps you to understand the concepts in depth with multiple examples along with illustrative images so i have broken down the concepts into different sections and you can learn the videos at your own pace and uh, during your revision slot you can play the videos of respective concepts and simplify your revision and a detailed explanation of concepts and numerical also need a special mention i have also included numericals and uh, simple tricks for you along with the notes as mind maps which will which i'll be uploading at, at a later stage and then practice as many questions as you want because you can save your time since you uh, need not search anywhere else I've, as i've included all the questions from a particular chapter and uh, i've got everything segregated chapter wise and also i'm trying to encourage you to practice the difficult topics and master it and also you can uh, in between take mock tests because mock tests are replicas of real examinations which helps you to understand the exam pattern and it improves your time management skills as well so now let us move on to a video for today that is the last part of surface chemistry where i have included some very important concepts and topics for your easy understanding okay now we were learning about the preparation of colloids in our last unit so i have included that slide for a quick recap that is a chemical methods of preparation and uh, we learned the this particular equation also by the chemical reactions which leads to the formation of molecules by double decomposition oxidation reduction or hydrolysis and these molecules aggregate to the formation of salts you know what is meant by coagulation i also had uh, taught you about coagulation flocculation and all that then uh, the two factors responsible for the responsible uh, for the stability of uh, lyo folic uh, lyophilic salts so actually the two factors lyophilic means you know lyophilic lyophobic lyophilic is uh, liking the lyophilic uh, solvent liking so the factors are the charge and solvation of colloidal particles so if you remove these two factors you can coagulate a lyophilic salt so, and lyophobic means solvent hating so how can you do that how can you coagulate uh, the by removing the two factors it is mentioned that you can coagulate a lyophilic salt how can you do that firstly by adding an electrolyte so you can add any electrolyte for coagulation and secondly you can add any suitable solvent like alcohol acetone these are added to hydrophilic salts so dehydration of dispersed phase will happen so under this condition you can add a small quantity of electrolyte to bring about coagulation so the two factors which will help you to Uh, coagulate a lyophilic solvent one by adding electrolyte second by adding a suitable solvent so how can you protect colloids so lyophilic salts these are more stable than lyophobic salts because you know lyophilic colloids are extensively solvated that is the colloid particles are covered by liquid sheet inside which they are dispersed but uh, uh, lyo for this lyophilic colloids they have a special property or unique property what is that property they can protect the lyophobic colloids as well so when you add how can you do it how can you make a lyophilic colloid protect a lyophobic colloid what you have to do is just add a little bit of lyophilic salt to the lyophobic salt so this lyophilic particles they form a protective layer around the lyophobic particles and protecting the latter from the electrolytes so normally lyophilic colloids are used uh, mainly for this purpose they are known as another name for them is protective colloids so here we have got to learn something known as a gold number that i uh, i'll be uploading that as a separate part in another video which i'll be 
uh, giving you a very simple explanation so that gold number is an important concept so you can easily understand that. Now next is emulsion. So what are emulsion? Liquid liquid colloidal system that is this portion of finely divided droplets in another liquid for example oil in water, water in oil and all that. So the mixture of two immiscible because they do not dissolve in, uh, or mix with each, each other totally or partially miscible liquids they, when they are shaken the coarse dispersion of one liquid in the other is obtained that is what we call as immersion that is you take uh, like some oil you put it in water shake it well you can see that the oil particles they do not mix completely with water or water will not completely you know uniformly spread in oil. So these are the uh, two types of emulsions that is oil dispersed in water OW type and water dispersed in oil WO type. So uh, emulsions of oil in water these are unstable. So what happens is that you can see them starting as two separate layers. If you want to stabilize it a third component known as emulsifying agent has to be added normally. So what does the emulsifying agent do? It forms an interfacial film between the suspended particles and the medium. So the principal emulsifying agents that is for OW emulsions are mainly proteins, gums, natural and synthetic soaps etc. And for uh, WO water oil type heavy metal, salts of fatty acid, long chain alcohols, lamp black etc. And uh, you can dilute the emulsion uh, with any amount of the dispersion medium. So when you mix the dispersion liquid uh, it forms a separate layer. So uh, the droplets in emulsions are normally mostly negatively charged and it can be precipitated by adding electrolytes. So these show normally Brownian moment and Tyndall effect which we watched in part 4 of our session from surface chemistry. And also you can break down, uh, break down emulsions into constituent liquids just by adding just by heating it or uh, freezing centrifuging by all these process you can break down the emulsion into the constituent liquid. Now you can see the most uh, commonly seen colloids around us normal day to day life is blue color of the sky, fog or mist, drain, fruit particles, blood, soil and the formation of delta. Now what are the applications of colloid? So electrical precipitation of smoke. What is smoke? It is a colloidal solution of solid particles like carbon, arsenic compounds, dust etc. in air. So the smoke uh, before you know it goes out of the chimney what is done it is made to pass through a chamber which contains plates having a charge opposite to the charge of the smoke particles. So you can see here the smoke entering the chimney and here uh, the precipitated ash will get collected. The particles when it comes in contact with the plates they will lose their charges. So high voltage electrodes see uh, as high as 30,000 volts or more than that is used. And the particles will settle down over here and uh, the precipitator is called the cotral precipitator. Now uh, for the purification of drinking water, oh, the natural sources from where we get the drinking water they often contain suspended impurities. You add alum, so alums are double sulfates of salts and uh, it is added to coagulate the suspended impurities and uh, the water is made fit for drinking. Now secondly medicine. So mostly medicines are colloidal in nature like uh, argyrol that is a silver salt used as eye lotion and colloidal antimony we use it in curing kala azar and uh, colloidal gold is used to uh, uh, used as injection for intramuscular uh, purposes and then milk of magnesia which is an emulsion is used to cure stomach disorders. Then colloidal medicines are very much effective why because they are having larger surface area and so it can be assimilated or dissolved easily. Now tanning, so animal hides which are colloidal in nature these hides as positively charged particles when it is soaked in tannin which contains negatively charged colloidal particles mutual coagulation happens which results in the hardening of leather and this process is known as tanning. So chromium salts are also used in place of tannin. Now next uh, photographic plates and films these are prepared by coating an emulsion of the light sensitive silver bromide in gelatin over glass plates or celluloid films and in rubber industry lactex which is a colloidal solution of rubber particles it is normally negatively charged. Rubber is also obtained by coagulation of lactex Then industrial products like paint, zinc, synthetic plastics, rubber, graphite, lubricant, cement these are all colloidal solutions. And with this we are coming to the 
end of the lesson surface chemistry and i would like all of you to go through these all uh, all these five units again and again repeatedly until you get thorough with the concepts and then after that you try to finish off the mcqs and before i wind up for today just i'd like you to share this channel with your friends and subscribe like my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button because as soon as i post new videos you'll get the notifications immediately and thanks for watching my video